쪽으로 하십시오. Hey everyone, Tyler here at the Movie Beat, back with another Korean movie review, back from my trip abroad and through mandated government quarantine, two weeks in a, you know, government facility. It was rough, but glad to be back. Um, it's getting settled into my new place, as you can see, a little bit different here, uh, a bit smaller, but I like it, it feels cozy, and I gotta go through that whole experience of unpacking the Blu-rays again and getting them all organized. Sort of a religious experience. I did enjoy it, but uh, I want to share my thoughts and review on a new Korean film. Uh, it did come out in February of this year, uh, as you probably saw from the title, The Man Standing Next. I did catch it on Netflix, so hopefully it's available uh, to you as well and you don't have to wait too long uh, to see this one. Just to get started, it seems to me like every year we get one or two big movies that help to tell the story of how post-war Korea developed, and really rich with political intrigue and controversy. These films, to me at least, are starting to feel like these puzzle pieces that are fitting together and really helping to illuminate this dark, history that um, really historians and the public are still really trying to make sense of. Um, and these movies are either helping or uh, pushing certain narratives at times. Um, obviously some of them have agendas, but one thing is for sure that the road to you know how Korea is today was no easy path and The Man Standing Next is yet another uh, tough chapter in that progression. The film actually recounts the 40 days that led up to the assassination of then President Park Chung-hee on October 1979. Um, and the movie doesn't really require any history knowledge of Korea because it starts with um, you know a little crash course in the times and what was going on. But the opening titles do state that the KCIA, the Korean Central Intelligence Agency, uh, at the time really wielded this immense power um, and was critical in keeping the president uh, in power for, you know, at the time was going to be 18 years. Um, and the president apparently really ruled with uh, an iron fist and he had control over the military and the media. Um, but also was very helpful in progressing the country um, and really moving them to, into the modern world with a lot of economic and uh, you know industrial type policies that um, really took them out of the Stone Age. So you know some goods and bads there, uh, depending on which side of the spectrum you lean on. But the movie doesn't get too deep into that. It does mention though that this KCIA, uh, the men here were the president's right-hand men. And so that's probably where the English title of the film is derived from, the man standing next. I believe that's referring to the president, just who is that man and what um, sort of influence do they have on the president? What's the relationship? Uh, we do know how one of those relationships ended uh, with the director of the KCIA uh, taking the president's life um, and assassinating him. What happened? How did that all build up? These 40 days begins with um, the former director of the KCIA and the film, his name is Park Yong-gak, played by Kwak Do-won. He is in America in exile threatening to release this very damning report where they're referring to it as a memoir um, that's highly critical of the president uh, Park Chung-hee and you know if made public would just be an absolute embarrassment uh, to the or the government and you know it could really threaten to kind of topple the whole thing and so the president in uh, emergency mode sends current director of the KCIA director Kim played by Lee Byung-hyun to sort of put out the flames and director Kim is actually friends with former director Park so that could hopefully help um, you know manipulate the situation to the president's advantage and all the while the president's chief of security played by E. Hee Joon um, who really encourages a lot of the unforgiving authoritarian style policies is you know garnering more and more of the president's favor thus potentially pushing director kim's uh influence out so uh we have this little rivalry that started and uh really the whole power hierarchy structure is threatened with this and it puts into question just exactly where the loyalties of each of the men lie or where they stand 
okay? So this movie, The Man Standing Next, was, for my money, beautifully photographed. Uh, it does seem like it's on location in several uh, scenes, so I'm going to say beautifully pho photographed over three continents. Um, and it has everything that you would want from a spy thriller, secret meetings, safe houses, uh, covert listening devices, even kidnappings, and assassinations, of course. So the movie really establishes itself as a great new addition to the spy uh, genre, spy thriller genre. And the 70s style vibe through amazing costumes for the secret agents and all of the politicians were just on point. Um, I loved the cold and calculated look and feel to this movie. There's a really uh, darkly lit, sort of claustrophobic interiors of you know a lot of the offices, um, administration buildings that are really nicely balanced with some wide exteriors of say the National Mall in Washington DC or the Palace Vendome in Paris. So I loved the look and feel of this movie. And also while it was a very big undertaking, uh, there's a lot of cast in this movie, um, big large roster of characters. It does feel like director uh, Wu Min Ho has a little bit more focus over this project than, say, his previous The Drug King. And while probably done for historical accuracy, I do feel like there's one or two too many characters who are given actual like name titles cards in this movie. Um, and it actually had me using the Netflix uh, like rewind type feature to try to reinforce these faces and these names so I wouldn't get you know too confused because it is kind of a nebulous type connection of people that get this whole thing in motion so um, but it actually turned out that they weren't that important so eh, it made me feel like in the end you know they didn't need to have uh, you know that many name cards and trying to establish all these characters. The performances uh, are also a little bit more understated than say, you know, compared to the director's previous films like Inside Men or The Drug King, like I said. So Lee Sung Min, who plays President Park Chung-hee, whoa, um, amazing uh, transformation. They got him really even looking like the actual, the president. Uh, he's got a very uh, commanding screen presence, but he is also gives a lot more of these like kind of cold, uh, dead looks at people that would, you know, just frightening. Um, you just feel like this guy has a lot he could do. Um, and it does help, you know, make all of the orders that he give more understandable that the people are obeying because really if they don't, they're gone. Um, at least that's the vibe that they give. Uh, at Lee Byung Hyun, who plays director Kim, also is very reserved yet strong in his performance um, and his portrayal as the director of the KCIA who killed the president. So his character in the movie really holds a lot of his inner thoughts and emotions to himself. You can you can see that in this in his performance that a lot of things are held back. And I did really like that because, you know, it gets you thinking and you can actually discuss with people like you know just what are his motivations and it leaves it open to interpretation um, as apparently is the actual uh, more close to actuality that you know people don't actually know it's not a cut and dry case of why exactly things went down the way it went down but probably my favorite aspect of this movie and I believe is the film's sort of central purpose uh, is really to explore those interpersonal relationships what caused this you know and what are the motivations crime is the headline but the motivations are definitely the more intriguing element as we probably all agree from watching really good true crime type stories was it out of jealousy and anger or more uh, commitment to uh, national duty um, so there really is a lot there to sort of break apart and um, it's not cut and dry like I said. And unlike a lot of Korean movies about historical or political events, I do feel like The Man Standing Next doesn't try to shove anything down our throats. It doesn't have a clear agenda. It is, to me at least, it felt like it's presenting 
uh, multiple sides to a situation that happened and it lets us decide how we want to view the people involved. However, looking back on the movie, I do feel like uh, some of the relationships were not as clearly defined as they could have been. Um, undoubtedly, that would have been very difficult to do, especially because the movie is focusing only on 40 days that led up to the assassination. But, you know, we're talking about relationships that evolved over years um, and very difficult to show just how that progressed. Uh, but I do feel like somehow if they could have done that a little bit better, it would have reinforced the severity of some of the betrayals in this movie that, you know, might have added to a heightened level of, uh, you know, paranoia and mistrust that, you know, is going on in the environments in this movie. Overall, uh, gotta highly recommend this movie just for the acting and historical significance. If it's on Netflix, I mean you're paying for your subscription anyways just watch it it's it's a great movie put it in your playlist now let me know what you guys think of it i'm gonna rate it a 7.5 out of 10 uh i am i really enjoyed it it's it's really i can't stop thinking about it um it's a little bit slow at times um, but that's kind of the nature of these spy thrillers um, on a side note, there was a film released in 2005 called The President's Last Bang uh, that really introduced me to this whole situation, um, this true situation of the assassination of the president. Um, and that movie does focus a lot more on the night the event took place and a little bit of the aftermath, some of the buildup, but really um, more of a narrow window. And its overall approach was a bit more um, tongue-in-cheek and actually very scathing of the president and the former president, the dead. And the movie found itself in some legal battles, uh, some legal trouble. But perhaps uh, the recent political scandals of president now ousted and jailed former president Park Geun-hye, first female president of Korea and daughter to the President Park Chung-hee, who was assassinated, you know, wow, Korea, wow, you got a lot of political scandals here. Um, perhaps public sentiment has tilted towards one end of the spectrum and maybe cleared away for a movie like The Man Standing Next to be released and for more people to really embrace it, to think about it. Uh, it did get a very, very positive response here in Korea, so um, and quite different from the way the president's last bang was received so that's gonna be it for this one thanks for watching everybody i'm glad to be back and uh, plan to do a lot more reviews coming soon um, thanks again i'm tyler at the movie beat as always keep watching movies